Hey, my name's Isaiah, and in this video I'm going to talk about the GM60 and GM70 gaming mice from MSI. Alright, so I'm going to talk about the, these mice here. And I have the wireless GM70 right here, which I'm just going to put out while I'm talking about these other boxes. So, uh, the two mice I'm going to cover today are pretty similar. Um, one is wireless supported and one just has a wired. Besides that, the only major difference is going to be that the GM60 is limited to 10,000 DPI roughly, and the GM70 when it's plugged in uh, through USB is up to 18,000. Besides that, they both have the RGB lighting, they have the same macro controls, they have the same uh, face plates and all that. So that is gonna be, it's gonna stay the same between all of them. But to uh, kind of unbox these, if you look at the GM60, and I'm going to show a video of this, but basically you open it up, you get kind of uh, all the insides. You can see the mouse, and the other side you see the grips, which I'll talk about in a bit. And uh, the GM70 is a box. It kind of opens up, it slides apart. And once you're done with that, in the very bottom there is kind of um, an extra mouse bag and cool little extra features that generally you don't get in, in mice. So as far as the mouse goes, when it comes to what it does itself, you can take off all the, the plates. So here I just pop off the sides. Um, they're replaceable with other little plates. And the top comes off, which is kind of hard to see, but maybe I'll do a close-up video. Um, and then you get the whole you know mouse itself. So that's a great feature in the sense that you know, if your faceplate breaks, there is an extra one in the box. Uh, if you have a different style of a hand grip, so these grips are meant for claw kind of hand where your, your fingers are the ones that are moving the, the mouse around. And then the kind of wider grips are meant for like a palm where your hand's resting on the mouse and it's not really gripping it with your fingers. So how does the mouse perform actually? You know, I, I've talked about the LED lights on it. I've talked about, you know, the expandability. You can change out the plates and everything. But how does a mouse actually perform when playing video games? And that's kind of like a question that's really hard to just say, hey, this is great, this is not great. I found that it was really excellent. It was above uh, standards. And I think the main reason for that is the software. You can control all the subsettings as far as how the mouse snaps to uh, different positions, how much you can lift the mouse off the table, your DPI, your polling rate, all those functions is in, present in the software. And that's a really good um, thing to have. It's a lot of times you come across uh, gaming mice and they say they have all these functions, but really they're, they're not present in the software. You can't change how high you can lift the mouse before it stops reading the, the laser stops reading the patterns uh, and stuff like that really m makes a difference. So I was playing a bit of quick championships, the beta, um, or early access and now it's the beta or vice versa. And I found that while I'm not very good at that game, people are a lot more skilled than I, I found that when comparing multiple different mices together, it was a huge difference uh, to use this mouse versus other ones. So, and then another, another game is, um, Counter-Strike, Go, or CS, um, any of those games work, especially with the AWP. I found that, you know, when you're, you're sniping and you have to get that zoom and you have to aim at the head and you just have to get the right angle, uh, this mouse is very, very precise about that. I never felt that I was being cheated in the sense that a mouse was cheating me out of my kill. And, it, and I guess I should back that up. In the very beginning, I did because the parameters are so vast that you can change all the things and so when I was first doing the reviews I was just trying out all the sliders and see what they did and I ended up getting a really weird combination that made it quite hard to kill things in a gaming sense uh, but once I kind of toned those down and got them right where I wanted I felt this mouse was just the best thing I've used it was kind of weird to say that but when it comes to competitive gaming the edge can be just how precise you are with a mouse I know latency has an issue with you know Ping, latency, input lag, all that stuff can factor into how good you are in playing online games, but not many people think about your mouse. And your your mouse has a very 
large role it plays in this because just your precision really matters on shooting games. It's not to say that this mouse won't work for MMOs or MOBAs. It will. It's just not going to be any different than any standard mouse. You have a few macro keys on the sides, um, but when it comes to MOBAs, I know a lot of people want to use their thumb and they want to press all those extra keys on there. They don't really care for one or two. They want a bunch. So I know that was a little bit of a ramble, but uh, I kind of went over the basics. Now it comes to software, I did say I really did enjoy the software in the mouse once it worked, but the mouse software from MSI has major issues. And I'm not talking about small issues, like big issues, like crashes, uh, lights stopped working, a lot of things like that. And uh, just earlier today, I, I filmed it, I'll show you here in a second, but uh, when I unplugged the mouse and plugged it back in, I lost all the settings. They completely stopped working. The macros I set, the LED lights color I set, they all reverted back to the faults. And all I did was unplug it, turn my computer off, turn it back on, and restart it. And I was just doing some maintenance about my water cooling. And that's just standard. Sometimes you want to unplug your mouse. So that's kind of a weird thing to have. And I just checked the software update. I am on the, the latest. It's September right now. I think the latest was June or something, and it really has not been updated. And to make matters worse, MSI has no information about their software. There is no information. When you click on the information button, all there is there is just the version. It doesn't actually tell you anything else. And I thought that was kind of a critical flaw and besides the bugs, because bugs can be worked out. You just patch them, you update them, good to go. I don't think anything's inherently wrong with the mouse itself. I think the mouse... Um, the firmware all that is just fine. I think the software that controls the mouse is the issue and that can be patched out. But when it comes to using the mouse, knowing what functions do what, it's kind of a lost cause. I mean, I had to Google a lot of things. I mean, it's kind of strange to think, you know, I review stuff. I do want to, I do want to expand my knowledge, but a lot of things I do already know. But the, the fact that I pretty much had to Google a bunch of different settings to figure out what they were and why they're named differently than other ones, or maybe MSI did the naming right, another company did the naming wrong, who knows. But um, if you're new to you know, settings for X and Y axis and all that for gaming, if you're new to what, what snapping is as far as you know, the points in which the cursor snaps to, uh, if you're new to all kind of these kind of functions or your sub settings, you're going to be a little bit lost, and I think the default settings aren't the best. And especially, like I said, if you pick the wrong setting, your mouse is going to perform horribly, and you're like, well, this is not a very good mouse. So I, I think MSI really needs to expand their user base as far as information and let people know what what's wrong with them, not what's wrong with the mouse, but what the mouse can do. Now, I know that was kind of a quick long ramble over overview of this mouse and it's kind of a weird uh thing to talk about because i'm talking about two different mice but this is the wireless one and uh, it does have the functionality to plug in usb cable which i i have here somewhere uh, let's see here nope wrong side yeah so i have the usb cable and it plugs into the top of the mouse and this is how you charge your mouse this is how you uh oops can't get it in and it is labeled. Sometimes I don't pay attention, but this is how you charge your mouse. Um, it has a long, nice, long cable, which is great. Um, the only big downside of you going wireless is that your polling rate drops to 1,000 instead of um, 3,000. And, um, you know, that's not the end of the world. I think, if you think about it, it's 1,000 times a second it's refreshing instead of 3,000 times a second. So really in actuality there's no monitor out there right now that can do a thousand hertz. So it, uh, your mouse is already going to be faster than that. You said a thousand uh, thousand hertz of polling rate um, and 3,000 is insane. But to, um, to wrap things up I don't want to ramble too much. Uh, I once again, I enjoyed the mouse. I enjoyed both of them. I primarily used the GM70 just because it had more functions and more things to test. 
but it's the GM60 pretty much performs the same. Lower DPI, I didn't notice a difference because the difference between 10,000 and 18,000 DPI is pretty high. Um, I really didn't know the difference. I'm sure people out there will. So if they want the best of the best, go for the GM70. Keep it wired so you can have the full 3,000 pulling rate. And then if you say on the go, uh, you can take your mouse and your USB dongle and be wireless and not have to worry about it. And speaking of the wireless part, all you have to do is just plug in the dongle and there's pairing buttons on the bottom, but I didn't have to do that because it was already prepared. Uh, you can have on and off switch just in case you don't want the mouse to drain its battery when you're not being used. Besides that, it was a great experience. All right, to conclude the final bit, the GM60 and GM70 are very similar in mice. Um, the GM60 has 10,000 DPI, GM70 is 18,000 DPI. They both have 3,000 hertz pulling rate. The GM70 only is 3,000 when you have it wired in. Besides that, I really like both of them, but I think the software is kind of buggy. So, if you're going to look at this mouse, make sure that after this video is published in September, maybe there's a newer version. If there's not a newer version of the software, you're going to run into the same problems I have. I'm using Windows 10 64-bit edition. Um, but once the bugs are patched out, I think this is going to be an excellent mouse.